you know, it's what we're geared to as humans. We love storytelling. And I'm one of these people. I'll hear, I'll read a story till the end. I don't care if it's good or bad because I want, I, you know, it's like a discipline. It's like I learn from everything that I read or, or anything creative. I learn from it, like what to do and sometimes what not to do. Welcome to Modern Publishing. I'm Victoria, author, editor, and the owner of Blue Pen. And today I'm on with Anthea T. Piskarik. Anthea has established a professional writing career as both a creative writer and a news reporter. She also holds degrees in theater and is currently marketing five screenplays. She's published the first two books of her historical fiction series, The Miriam Chronicles. And Anthea happens to be a client of Blue Pen as well. We helped her with the editing and design for the second book in that series, The Years In Between. Um, you, you definitely need to have all that. I mean, that's, that's the writer in you. you. You need to know your story. You need to have told the best story you can tell. And a development editor can definitely help in that respect. Um, yes, and it's very different from script writing. You know, as a writer, the notes, it's all about the notes, but Either way, you have to make sure that someone that you trust, it's really important to trust that person that they understand the story that you're trying to tell. And they understand your voice. And they hear your voice so that they're, they're giving you, I, I know that there's a difference. Some people you know, as an editor, as a development editor will change the story, but others will challenge you to tell a better story. And I've had that as well, where they say, you know, what, what are you trying to get to with this? It's more like questioning you, like to, to bring out, to mine that story more than to just, you know, change it. <laughs> it's like, but you're going to come into anything. It's like when you're trying to get your work out there, you're, it's all collaborative. Everything is collaborative in the arts. Uh, and that's a good thing. It's a really good thing because you, you learn more about yourself as an artist. And that's very important. It's very important. That is such a good description about, you know, finding someone who challenges you in that respect. Um, I was just discussing kind of the similar thing on the previous podcast that um, I did with Tanya E. Williams, who has been um, a client of mine for many years now. And we were talking about the fact that um, a lot of the time when we're doing developmental editing, it's it's happened several times now when I would come back to her with um, advice, suggestions that I had really thought about because they were either big changes or something that I wouldn't normally recommend, but I felt like it was the best way to go for that particular case. And she would come back and say, I was gonna do that. And I was either scared or I didn't think I could pull it off or didn't for whatever reason, but I had picked out the things that she was going to do wow. that she thought in her gut was right, but then just didn't. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. So you really understood where she was going with that story to the, to another, to the next level. And that's, I think you get that after... After working with someone for several books, definitely, but not not with everyone, I don't think, to to that degree. It takes it takes both parties being very present in that author editor relationship and both really coming to the table with the um excuse me, I lost my headphone, um, <laughs> coming to the table with the, the purpose of making that story better, leaving egos, leaving what, you know, it should be or what I would have done if it were my story or anything else, leaving all the noise and just focusing on what is the best thing for this story. Exactly. 
You are so right on. It's um, as as we had mentioned before. It's entering a story, but you know you can enter a story and not know what's going on. You have to enter the story with the mind of the creative mind too. It's like you can't just enter the story and just sit back and like okay, what's this? You really need to enter the story with an investment in that story to some degree of like you said, putting your ego aside, putting your own thoughts aside. And knowing what's best for the story. And I, and, I, and I can imagine that it is definitely an advantage when you know that the, the author, as you had mentioned, is someone that you've worked with. So, um, and, it, and in anything collaborative, even in the movie industry, um, that's why people work with the same people all the time. You know, it's like they, they, have, they enter these, they form these cadres of creatives, creative cadres. So, um, yeah. And it's because you trust them and you know what, you know what to expect. But, you know, sometimes you just have to take the leap. And I at least have someone who respects my writing as an author, even though I've had movie scripts optioned before, um, you know, on the merit of the script itself, but it never got beyond the option because that world is like playing the lottery, trying to get beyond, you know, the the option and, and things of that nature, which is why I turned to novel writing because, you can get a novel published. We all know that. I mean, how many novels are published every year? (laughs) I guess close to a million traditional and like 4 million non. (laughs) So, um, yeah, everyone knows you can get something out there, but is it your best work? You always want to have your best work out there. And that's the challenge for anyone. It's a, but there's nothing perfect. As you had mentioned, you, that would stop you from, from creating anything or, or going beyond the creation and getting it into the world because your stories aren't, you know, they're not diary journals. You know, you, you want, although sometimes it feels like it when not everyone's reading it, when you, it, it's starting to feel that way, but it's, you know, the marketing as we all know is, is a whole different world, but you, you know, you just have to believe that you have a story that's worth hearing. And, yes. um, I'll never stop loving hearing stories. It's just, we're, you know, it's what we're geared to as humans. We love storytelling. And I'm one of these people, I'll hear, I'll read a story till the end. I don't care if it's good or bad because I want, I, you know, it's like a discipline. It's like I learn from everything that I read or, or anything creative. I learn from it, like what to do and sometimes what not to do. And, you know, that's not a diss on anyone, but it's just, you know, how does it, how does it inform me as an artist? This is something that I don't think would work for me. So, um, yeah, but I, I, I have to tell one other story regarding the screenwriting. You know, I had this script, it was about a leprechaun and a stockbroker. It's a buddy film. And I was working with the director and I went through so many changes and the option kind of ran out. We couldn't get a deal going. We couldn't get the financing to get, to get things done. And I thought, wow, where do I go now with this? They weren't my ideas. I I was just going along with the notes. So I scrapped everything and I started back and I said, okay, I want to tell this story I want to tell. And that became a semifinalist in, in a screen craft. It beat out over 103,000 other scripts. And I now have that, that background of it to market it as a semifinalist in a highly competitive um, contest, screen craft. But if I hadn't gone back and trusted my instincts on what the story should be, oh, I could have just given up on it too. You know, like, you know, as a spec script, just leave it alone. It didn't go anywhere, but I, I needed to tell my story. So I did that. And, it, and it's now come back to life. It's risen from the ashes into something that is now being looked at. So, you know, sometimes you have to trust yourself too. And, uh, Collaboration is important, but so is trusting your voice. That is very well said. And that's such an important thing to, you know, you skew too far in either direction and it's going to be negative for you if you don't take in any feedback, especially from professionals, um, whether that be you know, your agent or editors or um, beta readers you trust, if you're not taking in feedback and considering it, then you're working in an echo chamber and that's not going to be the best thing for the story. But 
you, like you said, you also have to trust yourself and trust your vision and your skills Mm -hmm. as a writer. Right. And yeah, so, and especially, you know, I'm sure we all have those works that we look back on and say, well, knowing what I do now, I would have done this differently. But it's part of the process and that growth. Yeah. As long as you don't start second guessing yourself, because even the arts are, there's a vulnerable feeling in any of them. And I, um, I mean, I study theater and that's probably the most vulnerable is, you know, I studied acting in New York and I, I know what it's like to, uh, the hardest person to play is yourself in life. I, I've learned that. <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier to play someone else, but I, you know, I'm so grateful, Victoria, for all the different disciplines that I've, um, expose myself to as an artist, you know, like writing and acting. Um, because I know what it's like to be another character and I can, I can create that character in my head. Cause I mean, acting is, whoa, it's, it's like you, the subtext and all, like you're only, they're only seeing this person talking on stage, but there's this whole other, all these different layers that you had to create to get that person on stage. And it's really informed me as a writer. I um, I would have traded that for anything. It's just another life and it's a very time consuming one. So, you know, I can't be all. I, I, I've really devoted myself to the writing as much as I love acting. <laughs> but it's really helped me as a writer. It really has that theater um, background very much so. So I know we had kind of talked about a couple of questions that were were this has been a great conversation I, so far yeah. i'm really enjoying this i am too i'm <laughs> learning from you that's i love how you described a few things i really do yeah oh that's one of my favorite parts about this is you know learning from each other it's one of my favorite parts of just the writing community in general so that's always great but you know if you had to if you had to pick uh one of the most worthwhile investments that you've made what would you say it would be and that can be time money energy anything oh my okay i would have to say i was a part of a screenwriting program in hollywood called act one writing for hollywood and i um that was in 1999 i i was actually the very first that was the very first ever act one writing for hollywood and they chose 30 writers throughout the country and Canada. And I happened to be one of the 30 based on the work that I submitted. And I, um, I can still see how that has changed my life. The relationships that, that has created for me, I, I can still see it's such a big part of my, even though it was a one month long time in Hollywood, it's still informing what I do now. And the relationships that I had then have created relationships that have created relationships that it's almost like this, you know, one thing leading to another, like the six degrees of separation. It was so worth my time and effort, even though, you know, a lot of rejections and, you know, being a part of that and options and everything, but the relationships, there's a relation, there's relationships that I formed in the last couple of years that go all the way back to that because of relationships in between that were like bridges to it. And there's something I learned from one of the, um, the faculty. So there was this one wonderful teacher. They were all wonderful mentors and teachers, but she looked out at us at the class and she said, I've got one piece of advice for you. And she went like this, cut, cut, cut. (laughs) It's like, I still have that visual in my head. So in editing, I love cutting I can even in dialogue I will see like you didn't have to say that part you can just get to the the kernel of what needs to be said in that even in my books my books and in my scripts I I see what is not the fact you know what does it need to be in there and to trim the story down to what it needs to be and I totally get what she's saying because and and it and you don't say it the first time around always you see it like the second when you read it and i i just had that like cut 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 in my head like i know how important it is and it works in everything that i do now it's like 
and there were so many other things that I learned from that, but it's the relationships that it created, um, networking. And it's, and it's, you never, when you keep that tie to something that was important in your life, it, it just keeps, um, developing <laughs> that tie just keeps developing all along the way. Um, but there's some other things. I mean, I, that, that's probably the first thing that comes to mind because it's really making a play in my life right now. Um, it seems like it never really went away. So I, I guess an investment, I, that's probably in the words, you know, in the terms of investment, the time and the, and the, and the expense, it wasn't even, I mean, I had a free room. I, I was so blessed. They were just starting out. So we were the, we were the trial run for the whole program and it's now everywhere in the country. It's really proliferated, but to be part of the pioneers is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And, you know, I think the thing that I would emphasize about that, um, especially for listeners thinking about ways that they can, you know, what are they going to be looking back on in a few years and think, oh, I'm so glad I did that. What I would emphasize there is the risk, you know, you're, you are putting yourself out there and you're risking rejection. You're risking being told no, that your work didn't make the cut. And that can be so hard for writers. Rejections are, are tough. I, um, I mean, I was a grant writer for many years for a nonprofit. And I, um, I know what rejections like. I know what deadlines are like, too. You know, <laughs> obviously. I, but yeah, rejections are a part of life in the arts. You know, it's. Oh, it's so hard because you take it personally. It doesn't, it never gets easy, ever. It just doesn't. But you just, you know, I've heard you just need one set of eyes on your work, especially in the screenwriting world. You know, someone gets your story. I mean, the writing, in the publishing world, even though the competition is fierce to get in front of people's eyes, there's more of a chance to. You know, they can buy the book. You know, you're not going to see a movie until it gets produced. Even if it's the best script someone ever read, it's not going to get it's and it's a millions and millions of dollars investment and everybody's, you know, got their jobs on the line. So it's a whole different industry. But um, yeah, it's it doesn't stop you from creating on, on either one because you just you have to believe enough in yourself to think that it, you're worth it. You're worth every every um, minute that you spend on anything creative. And it, and it belongs in, in front of people's eyes. You just have to believe in yourself. You really do. Um, I've heard so many people, Victoria, I don't you probably have to, oh, I've got a story for you. And it's like, why aren't you telling that story? <laughs> oh, here, I've got a story for you. It's like, tell it then, you know? It's like, tell your story. Believe in it. Believe in yourself. Yeah. I love that so important and very well said. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I can even add much to that. It's wonderful. Um, so how we've talked, you know, a fair bit about the industry, not too in depth. Um, what do you think when you think modern publishing industry? Oh, what are your social platforms? You know, how many followers do you have? I I would really, have, no one had to worry about that years ago. How in the world did anyone get a book published? You know, it's it's such a different dynamic now because of social media. I don't know where that's going to end. It's not going to end. It's, it's going to continue. I don't know what that does to the marketing. I see more so of eBooks. I mean, that's going to be the way people read. It's, I, I can see that's not going to change. Um, it's just going to continue in that realm. But I, you know, I was on a plane and I saw people reading books. I mean, I, most of the people had a book in front of them. So it's not like the, these are going away. I think that the, the marketing is going to be always the challenge. The greatest challenge is to get books in front of people for a long period of time. And I think that the series way of going, it seems to be the way to, to get, you know, the, the back stories or the stories that are the back, I can't think of the word now, <laughs> your, your stories that, you know, have been sitting around for a while, it gets them back in front of people. Like I know that when the fourth book comes out, someone will go back and read some of the other books that have been published as part of the, of that. 
stand I, I know authors who have standalones that just disappear. And I'm not saying that you have to write a series, but I, I can see where those do stay in the public eye longer because you can go back and read the stories before. Um, what will it look like in 10 years? Oh my goodness. I, 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 I would love to know that myself. It's like, I, I don't know how much more social media I need. I have two websites. I have, I have all the usual suspects. I love doing this. I, you know, I have my acting background. I, you know, I, I like to, to be the energized person who goes and, and talks to people. Um, I don't, I don't know what else can be done to tell a story. I, I think audiobooks are definitely going to be the wave that's going to continue as well. I, I can see that the acting is getting even better. I mean, audiobooks are almost like radio plays anymore. They're, they're so sophisticated, um, much more so than they were years ago. And let's see what else? Ebooks, audiobooks, and just the series series books. I, um, I don't know what else to, to expect anymore. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I would love to hear from you on that one because you're really in that piece of it. I'm just trying to stay in my creative world and tell the best story. I don't know who's going to hear it though, you know, <laughs> but audiobooks are definitely my next step for sure. My next endeavor. I mean, audiobooks are such an amazing thing. Um, I listened to them while hiking. Yes. And I made um, the mistake of listening to Neil Gaiman's American Gods um, as the first audiobook that I enjoyed. And um, I am not sure that another will ever compete with that. It is just brilliant. Yeah. Full cast, wonderful, wonderful voice acting. Um of course, an amazing story. Um, but yes, like you said, they are so, so much better than they used to be. Just, it is, um, it, it is artistry yes. going into that. It is. And it's going to continue to develop. I heard the Lincoln Highway. Um, I was just mesmerized. I'm like washing dishes and I'm like a zombie. Because uh, I'm in that world and I'm just like putting dishes away. And <laughs> And it's like, oh my goodness. And then I also, um, what else did I hear recently? Um, All the Light We Cannot See, um, Cloud Cuckoo Land. And I thought, you know, I'd get lost because, you know, there's so many different Cloud Cuckoo Land is, I, don't, I can't think, of, Andrew Doer, Doer is the um, author of, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning. But I, um, I'm hooked on audio. I, I have to have an audio now. I, I have to, what I'm reading, I also have to complement it with an audio book. So, um, yeah. I would love to be an artist in an audio book, but you know what I realized? I, I, I actually used to um, read story, news stories for blind people, and then the cartridges were sent out to blind people. And I didn't realize how hard that is. It's really hard. And I've studied acting, but I always had my lines memorized. I mean, and then I would rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. And I thought, how in the world are they staying in this book? And how many breaks do they take? And how long does it take them to do this? It's like a whole other world. And it's really talent involved in that, major talent, more so than stage, stage acting, much more so. So my hat is off to these audio artists, very much so. It really is. And especially, you know, to do a really good job with that, you you kind of have to read it first to know what's coming. Because I think about when you're reading a book, especially with dialogue, you know, sometimes there'll be a piece of dialogue and then a description of how it's said, or sometimes you have to know that information to be able to deliver it appropriately. Yes. So yes, it's yeah. it's got to be just time consuming and so much talent yes. and skill. Yes. And I, and I remember when I was reading these articles and they were being taped, you know, obviously recorded right away on the microphone, I would, I would mess up words. And <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm glad this isn't going anywhere else. It's like, and I thought, do I even have the capacity to do something like being an audio artist? Um, like I said, stage acting, it's like, I, those, they were recorded in my head. I could play them any way I wanted. You know, it's like, it was all there. So um, hats off once again. 
so yeah so we talked about some of the way that ways that the industry is changing and you know that kind of the purpose of this podcast is to talk about how individuals are defining that future because the industry is changing but it's not just a train chugging along there are a lot of authors and professionals who are are making uh making their way and and carving out that path for others so you know do you see yourself as a trailblazer in the industry <laughs> i i will tell you something from my lips to god's ear whatever i um I love movies. I love my novels, but I love movies. And I know that the only trailblazer for me is if these stories end up on the screen. That's my, that's my goal. And I'm working on, I've actually had some book scouts reading them. They see the visual aspect of them, the character depth. And we'll, we'll see where that's the only trailblazing I can do. I, I want, I want people to see this, the, the, the stories and then go back to the book and learn more about the story from the book, because I believe that both of those that can have such a great impact. We've all seen, you know, IP, it's all about, you know, intellectual property, create classics. And that's, that's what my trailblazing will be. If I, if I ever get there is IP going to the next level, that would be my dream. I love that. And, you know, you're in such a unique position to do that and to create something that that is wonderful and deep and uh, oh, great to experience in the novel form, but translate well translates well to the screen. Which, yeah, that's got to be just kind of a unicorn. That's that's it. It's a trailblazer. We'll see. Stay tuned on that one. <laughs> So tell us, where can folks go to stay tuned and to learn more about you and your books? Well, um, I do have, like I, said, I mentioned, um, two websites. One is Anthea T. Piscaric, which is my um, my author website. And I have St. Martin Productions, which is my whole breadth of all my creative endeavors, um, including a, a short film that I've been working on for the last decade. We'll see where that goes. But yeah, Anthea T. Piscaric um, has links to... Uh, to the Amazon and, and also Barnes and Noble has my book, um, both of these books. Unearthing Christmas is only available in used forms, although it made it on the Amazon bestsellers list last year, even though it's depublished. That is a mystery in and of itself. <laughs> I don't know how that happens, but it, it but it did. And then Unearthing, or the, the Years in Between is also available. Um, but you can get to the links through my my website, Anthea T. Piscaric. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, I also write blogs on Goodreads and in my websites, both websites, I write monthly blogs. So I'm a blogger and an author and someone who stays creative and enters stories. That's my, that's my gig in life. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a pleasure knowing Victoria. It's a pleasure knowing you and, and your professionalism and your love of stories and your commitment to, to your authors. I'm very appreciative of that. It, finding you was, was one of the best things that's happened to me in the last two years. Well, <laughs> thank you, Anthea. I appreciate that so much. Um, you know, that's, <laughs> that's why I'm here. Yeah. That's why um, I do what I do yeah. and why everyone at Blue Pen does what we do as well. And I, I appreciate that more than you know. Um, thank you so much for for being on the show and sharing all of your knowledge and experience. Um, Still learning. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Still learning. Aren't we all? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thanks to our viewers for hanging out with us today. I hope this conversation inspired you to blaze your own trail in the publishing industry. The full episodes are available as podcasts. You can just search for modern publishing wherever you get your podcasts or head over to bluepinbooks.com slash modern publishing. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And happy writing as always. That's it for today. I'll see y'all next time.